This video is going to be about making a, a nut for the um, fixture to preload the bearings on this, uh, this shaft right here. So um, I don't want to take too much time talking about things, so we're just going to pretty much get into it. Uh, instead of turning it on the lathe, we're going to mill it on the mill. And so we're going to just get into the programming on the computer and then set up on the mill and, and uh, we'll probably, we're going to mill the thread, mill the hex, and then part it off and do the other side. Uh, just want to show you a different way of doing it because we have CNC equipment. We're going to go ahead and do it this way. And uh, so let's get to it. Okay? Okay, here's the fixture, and then we're going to subtract away, we're going to come up close first, and then we're going to subtract away the end support, and the shaft, and the washer, and then we're going to be left with the nut here, and, and um, a few different views of the nut, and then here coming up is a drawing that I made, shows some of the dimensions of the nut. So get an idea of what we're what we're trying to achieve here so let's uh, go to the computer okay here's the um, part program in the cam software the this cam software is a spree cam software I use it at the shop to program for the bigger machines I need it for the Mazak to program for um, to do uh, you know because it's a five axis machining center and I, and this particular software has a good post processor for that machine so that's the reason I use it it's not really any other reason it's not particularly that easy to use this software there's other softwares that are simpler and easier but it'll do the more complex movements of the machine than necessary for the five axis machine anyway we're going to use it here to do this. Um, I'm going to run through the simulation so you can see what's going to happen here. So we're going to uh, I'll start it off here. We're going to drill a starting hole in the middle of the part, the stock. And then we're going to mill off the rough off the hex on the OD. And then finish the OD with the same end mill. And then it's going to finish the face, and then it's going to mill out the bore for the thread with this helix. And then a little step on the OD, and then chamfer that step, chamfer the ID, come back with a thread milling tool, and mill the thread. Okay. So, pretty simple, but that's what we're going to do here. So, I've already processed the code, and I'm going to use a different piece of software to send it to the machine. This is called Predator. This software, Pre Predator CNC Editor. And you can use this to edit manual edits, but it also has a um, communication utility in it that I can upload and download programs through the serial cable to this little Haas mill here. So let me get that all ready. The machine turned on. It's not turned on right now and, and uh, load the program in there and then uh, I'll get back with you. We'll do the setup. Okay, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, here's the um, part in the vise. I already have these vise jaws made from some other job, I don't know, a long time ago. They happen to be the right diameter for this stock, the stock we're using. So we don't really have to mill any jaws, fortunately. Stick this down the jaws, tighten the vise up, and then we'll jog the spindle probe down here, somewhere close to the part. We're gonna set our fixture offset. Okay, here we go. Cycle start.
This spindle probe sure makes it a lot easier to set stuff up. Then that did the X and Y, and this is the Z offset coming up. And we're going to set the Z down a little bit anyway, so I think there's a little bit of a, a, a bump in the middle of the part from facing it, but we're going to set it down another ten thousandths minus 0.01 input. Okay. So now, pretty much ready to run this thing. We're going to look at the graphics over here. So let me uh, get that. Okay, here's the graphics. We're going to watch the graphics just to make sure we're not doing something totally wrong here. Looking pretty good. I think if we put it at three, we can see the program over here where it's going to and that looks pretty good so far I don't really have any alarms so far it's milling the thread now looks pretty good so I think we're just about ready to go let me show you the little uh, up here if you can see them. There, these are the these are the Renishaw cycles for this one here for doing the OD. So G65 P9023 is calling up the the program the the macro. This is calling the forum macro, and this is the program. 9023, which is Renishaw's easy set cycles. A2 point is measuring the OD of a round boss. S1 is the fixture offset. D1.75 is the diameter of the stock. And Z, it's going to come down in an incremental distance from where the probe's sitting, a half an inch, minus 0.5 and Z. And it's going to touch the sides of the part just like you saw it in the video earlier. And then this G65 is calling for another macro. 9023 is the Renishaw's Easy Set program again. S1's is the fixture offset, first fixture offset, G54. And A9 point is measuring straight down in Z to set the, the Z offset. I just want to show you those. The, this uh, Haas machine here has a, this in it with the probe option, the probing option uh, of the spindle probe and the tool probe, so it has these cycles in there. It makes it very easy to find the edge of the parts or center lines or various things or even measure the part and check the dimensions if you so desire. So I just want to show you that. Okay, now we're going to start machining the part. First we're going to drill the hole like you saw in the graphics to clear out some material so that the half inch end mill doesn't have so much to cut when it uh, mills the helix down inside the bore. I'm going to come in with the half inch end mill, start roughing out the hex on the OD here. Um, it's getting kind of a lot of coolant on the lens, but I'm actually stopping and wiping it off and kind of cutting it out of the scene if I can. But we're just roughing off the hex down, three steps down. Here, and then, and then uh, it's going to do a finish cut around the OD. Just like you saw on the, on the CAM software's simulation. And then top face, right there. And the helix going down in. This is actually helixing down in and finishing it to size at the same time. This is one way to mill out a, a hole and not put too much force on the end mill and not load up the end of the end mill. kind of hard to film with flood coolant 
as you can see it gets all over the lens and that's cutting the step in the OD for the um, 30 degree chamfer on the OD of the nut Here comes the 30 degree chamfer tool cuts a chamfer and then we come in with a spot drill after that to chamfer the bore. Oh, here I'm measuring the, the bore to make sure it's the right size and the hex, the flats on the hex, make sure they're correct. There should be an inch and one eighth more or less. on those flats. And then we come in with the um I think I had to rerun the chamfer on the OD because it was a little bit it I set it down a little bit more. And then uh in there with the chamfer the bore for the thread. ran it again because it was a little bit small it's then here's threading the thread with a chamfer tool you, you generally set it high and you run it a few times to get it down to size I set the thread mill a little bit big just because uh, I wasn't sure where it was going to cut exactly and then adjust the diameter of it till it you get it down closer to the size you're looking for and test fit the part in there so that's generally the way you do it on you run the first part once you get one of these things set and you're running quite a few parts you can pretty much leave it alone after that it'll, it'll run quite a few holes still a little bit tight so to rerun it again Took me about three times or so to run it to get it to fit. But once you get them set, I've run oh hundreds of holes. Never had to adjust the offset. They really they work really good. Um, this particular material is a the same as the shafts made out of. It's drill. It's a piece of drill rod. And uh, so it's a little bit tough. It's not that tough, but it's a little bit. But these things work really good. I use them all the time on my bigger machines at the shop. Okay, here we come in to part the, the thing off in the lathe. And... Um, I don't know, I had a little bit of trouble with getting this to work exactly the way I wanted, but eventually I got it. I didn't I didn't get too good of pictures of this. I changed the camera around and here in a second and it I was just checking here to see if I had stuck it out far enough. So I parted it off. I don't really care, like parting operations too much. I'm not really very consistent a lot of times. It's hard to get it consistent cut sometimes, but I prefer to saw a part off and then flip it around and face it off in the lathe rather than part it, but this is what I did this time. It, it worked all right. I got a little bit of chatter on this thing, uh, thing, but I've never this this Haas this little Haas lathe. I have a little difficulty with parting in it. Sometimes it does real good, and sometimes it doesn't. I think it might be the way this chuck is mounted on the spindle more than the lathe, though. I think I need to make a new backing plate for the chuck. It's a uh, where the screws go in. This has an A spindle nose, so it screws on, the backing plate screws on with half 13 screws. 
and it's kind of thin back there and I think I need a better backing plate. Here we're um, probing the nut. The spindle probe is really nice because you can I probe the y-axis first here and then you'll see it jump over just a little bit to get centered on, on the Y right there and then I can probe right on the points of that hex and a probe will get it exactly on the point. It hits it fast once then it slows down and it comes up slower so it looks like it missed it there but it didn't really and then it moved it over in the X a little bit to, to probe the Z and Spindle probe will get it right on the point of that hex and be precise. It'd be a little bit hard to do that with an edge finder. You could probably do it with a dial indicator, swing the points. But the probe actually does that quite nicely. So I centered it up and set the Z. And then we're just going to mill the, the other side. It's actually the same as the other program. just uh, without a f with a few of the tools missing. It's basically the same program. Just uh, the face the top, chamfer the, put a step in the OD, chamfer the OD, and then chamfer the Then measure the um, part with the micrometer here, and then um, Here's the finished part. Doesn't look too bad. And uh, here's some pictures of the coming up of the completed part on the shaft right there. A couple of shots of this. The nut and the threads, the milled threads. You see they look real nice. Thread mills do pretty good. And another shot of the end of the shaft. The nut on it. So that's it. Thanks for watching.